presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport. In the show, we met the man who is having a great season in Russia, Mantas Kalnietis. Joe Ingalls has fully converted to the world of social media. For Tremel Darden, the best offence comes from a solid defence. We caught up with Hanga and Laval before they faced each other on the court. And we check out the B-Win MVP and top three plays of the week. We start our weekly roundup in Istanbul, where one of the most exciting matches of the Turkish Airlines Euroleague Top 16 third round took place. On Thursday night, Galatasaray Live Hospital Istanbul hosted Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar at the Abdi Pechki Arena. Leading the way for the home side was, of course, Carlos Arroyo. The Puerto Rican dished out six assists and ended the game with 19 points. He also kept his team in front at the break. At the other end of the court, Mantas Kalnietis produced a great second-half display and with 13 points overall, he managed to tie the game for his team in the third quarter. It proved to be an adrenaline fueled final few minutes, with Arroyo on fire and driving to the rim with a basket and a three-point play that gave Galatasaray a four-point lead. But with just 10 seconds left, Lokomotiv turned once again to Kalnietis. The Lithuanian did not disappoint and scored a three-pointer that gave Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar a thrilling victory, 63-62, their first in the top 16. A perfect way to introduce the match winner. Mantas Kalnietis is one of the players turning around his season in this top 16. The 27-year-old guard from Lithuania has been playing for Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar for two seasons now, after six years spent with Shalgiris Kaunas, the team of the city where he was born. I'm really happy to live in Krasnodar. Found better weather and much bigger uh, traffic. <laughs> I'm spending my free time with the family because now uh, I, have, I have two kids, so to take care of them. After ending the regular season with a 6-4 record, Lokomotiv Kuban want to maintain a good atmosphere in the locker room in order to try and reach the playoffs. We're not satisfied just to be in top 16 and we, we need to continue a good our job from zero. We're trying to support each other. If my teammate is on the floor, I need to, to take care of him, to, to say good word for him or, you know, to just to be a real team, not just one, one group. For me, the most important to create good atmosphere in a team and to create really good fist in a court. In this edition of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague, Mantas is dishing out 4.5 assists per game and is a decisive player both in defence and in transition. Some excellent performances, despite having struggled with minor injuries and in particular a finger that caused him a lot of grief. It's not real broken, it's really tough to play, especially in Euro the games. Uh, <laughs> Not, not to be ready for 100%. This year, Mantas has shined on more than one occasion, but for him, winning is the only thing that counts, and he's always looking to the future. 
Yeah. And Tel Aviv was good, but I cannot be satisfied because we lost the game. It doesn't matter, play good or bad. I wish my uh, best game in the future. The secret of his game is probably the tranquility that coach Evgeny Pashutin gets across to the players. He was a player, he knows how to how it's, it's, it's important to be uh, mentally ready and mentally free. He asked us just to enjoy the basketball, play simple. We are really happy to play in this kind of system. In addition to being a versatile player in the best EuroLeague tradition, Maccabi forward Joe Ingles is among the players in the competition who have most embraced social media. We get his opinion about the phenomenon and the new opportunities for players to share their love of the game with the fans who support them. For me personally, just to, to give um, the general public a, um, a view of a, a professional athlete's life and, and obviously some of the things we, that go on on a day-to-day on -day basis, some of this stuff um, that they don't really see. They just see the, the, the final product of, us, of playing a game or, or whatever it is. And if you use it the right way um, and, if, and if the people trying to talk with you use it the right way, I think it's a, a really positive thing. The popularity of social media has spread like wildfire, giving a global player like Ingalls the opportunity to connect from everywhere with everyone. And kind of just started it because everyone was, really. Um, but I think it's grown into a, a pretty big thing. And um, obviously, teams are using it, um, businesses are using it, everyone's using it. So it's a quick way to, to, to get something out there. and and for people to, to hear what you want to say or for people to, to, to connect to you. It's pretty amazing that people all over the world that, that don't even know you can, can send you something and um, if you are semi-active on it, you can, you can read it from, from wherever you are. Social media offers daily opportunities for athletes to show the lighter side of sport. I take advantage of it by, by using it and um, showing off a little bit too, I guess, <laughs> some of the things. We can make some pretty funny things. Some obviously some funny things go on in the locker room or, or on the court. And if you can catch those moments and, and share them, it's, it's, it's always a bit of fun. After playing for three seasons with Barcelona, Joe moved to Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv last summer. Thanks to his use of social media, it didn't take him long to make his friends appreciate his new city. When I first signed in, in Israel, a few of my friends were like, are you sure you, sure you want to go there? And, and obviously putting up pictures and, and stuff like that, everyone sees what a, a beautiful city and, and how safe it is and, and all that. And um, yeah, back in the day, I wouldn't have been able to do that. It would have been a string and cup trying to trying to get back to Australia, <laughs> I'm trying to tell them about my experiences here. These new forms of communication have made distances disappear and made the exchange of information a lot easier for everyone. And basketball is no exception. If you're a scout looking, it's so easy these days to jump on the internet and, oh, Joe Ingalls is here. Um, here's some, some things of what he's done, YouTube, all this, this, this media stuff. Um, and you can, can really find anything out about a player pretty quickly. Anything can be posted, especially if you're a star of Maccabi Electra in front of a TV camera. I'll definitely put a couple up from today. When Tramel Darden, in March 2013, at the end of the top 16, signed for Real Madrid, he was averaging almost 10 points per game for Jalgiris Kaunas. Of course, he couldn't play the Final Four in London with his new team, but he contributed greatly to winning the Spanish League. Throughout the years, Tramel has greatly improved his skills. 
now, he can score with almost the same efficiency both in the paint and from long distance. And he has learned to read the kind of defense he has to face to perfection. You want to be able to take what they give you and uh, re react off of what they do. So um, when you know somebody gives you a hard drive right or you know playing you for your shot, you want to create enough space to get your shot off. Um, some guys play physical defense and use their body, and some guys uh, use quickness. So you want to be able to react and adjust to how they're playing you. Tramel is a great defensive player. But he can also shine on offense due to his lightning quick first step, which allows him to drive to the basket and make that extra room for an open shot. I use my defense to help my legs on offense. Um, you need strong legs for defense, and you need your legs, you know, for shooting, uh, stopping, and, and jumping. So when my legs are up under me um, and I'm playing really good defense, I believe offensively it just becomes a little bit easier. In order to score, a player needs lots of quality. Cromel has the right formula. You want to have uh, the speed to get by a person, but you want to have the strength to take their hit if they're stronger than you and bump you. And you need skills to control the ball. If you don't control the ball, you can be fast and you can be strong, but you make your move, you can lose the ball right away, and it's a turnover. Without forgetting that even the most talented players must be cultivated and nurtured. Every day after practice, you want to continue to keep, to keep yourself sharp. Um, I'm always doing extra work, extra moves, um, moves on the moves, post moves, uh, face up moves all the time. Just keep yourself sharp and keep yourself fresh. A young player's main quality is often his aggressiveness. But when they mature, they realize there must be more to their game. The older you get, the longer you play this game, the, the, lower, the more balance you have to yourself, a great temperament of knowing when to be aggressive, when not to be aggressive, when the team needs you to do something a certain way and when they don't need you. So it's just, you know, experience and years of uh, you know, watching, listening and learning. Nikola Mirotic won the award in the regular season round one. Now another Real Madrid player earns the B-Win MVP award for the top 16 round three. It's Rudy Fernandez in one of the best performances of his career. Fernandez scored 24 points to lead Madrid to victory over FC Bayern Munich by 111-87 the highest top 16 points total in 12 years. Rudy made four of seven two-pointers. Four of six from the distance and all four of his free throws. He added five rebounds three assists, one steal, and drew five fouls for a performance index rating of 30, tying his second best ever score in his four Turkish Airlines EuroLeague seasons. If you're a boy growing up in Budapest, Hungary, you probably would not choose to play basketball. This is not the case for Adam Hanger, the Laboral Kucha Vittoria forward. Although he started playing football, he discovered basketball when he was still very young. I started basketball like uh, when I was like six years old and I started because, uh, because I just liked it. You know, I played soccer before and of course like basketball was like, like in a new sport for me. So when I started, it was, it was like, you know, I liked it and everything and, and just turned out like, you know, it's, it's better than, than soccer. So I just stick with basketball and like, you know, since then, like, I'm still playing. Coming from a country with little basketball tradition means there are a few more obstacles to overcome. Like the time, like five years ago, it was really hard for me to get out because like uh, everybody said like, okay, he, he can play, but 
but he's playing in Hungary, so he's not playing in the same level like any other uh, European prospect players. But uh, you know, I had the chance to came to Spain, and and I took it, and I think it was a really good decision because now I'm here, like one of the the biggest Euroleague teams. At 24, wherever you come from, you still need to do the same things as everyone else. I think like every player has to go hard. So it's it's of course like because like you know nobody knows nothing about like uh, what is Hungary or what what's the basketball over there. Maybe you have to work a little bit harder and like you have to show yourself a little bit more. But but I think every player has to work hard to to get like you know like team like this or or any other Euroleague team. Adam is not the first Hungarian player in Vitoria. An eminent predecessor is Cornell David, who played the 2006 Final Four in Prague, scoring 12 points against Maccabi in the semi-final. David was a player that inspired Adam's career. He's the best Hungarian uh, basketball player, so, so of course like it was a big challenge for me to come here and play like the same place where he played. Of course, I wanted to to give like at least like or like maybe the same like what he did. One of the teams in line to have a dream finish to the season is EA7 Empori Armani Milan. Following the huge victory over Olympiakos Pireus, morale is sky high. The American forward of African origins, Gani Lawal, is part of the recent success story. My father uh, is Nigerian. He came here in the, or I'm say late 70s. So uh, he raised me with a lot of the language, the culture, the foods. Um, I was in Nigeria a lot this summer with the national team. Um, you know, the dances, the culture, the arts, it's, it's very a big a part of me. Respecting and understanding his origins are values which are close to Lawal's heart, added to his deep religious beliefs. Uh, I think we're all part of the human family, and I think we're all a part of God's family, because we all need his love. It's purely from the heart, and I try to be like that, when I, whether I'm interacting with all my teammates, my guys, my coaches, my co-workers, and uh, just try to keep a humble heart and a thankful spirit. A belief that Gani also expresses openly in the locker room after the pre-match speech given by the coach, when the entire team gathers round to say a prayer. Before we take the floor, we just go to God in prayer to ask him to protect us. We ask him to give us strength for the night. We ask him to keep us focused on playing together. It's a different form, a different tone every time. Because life is never the same. We're always constantly moving. So it's, uh, you know, certain things may change and certain things do stay the same. EA7 Milan are counting on their winning tradition and a passionate crowd to take them all the way to the final four on home soil. But now they need to add solidity to their very positive results. When you consistently win on any level, then you gain the respect automatically. So if we can continue to be uh, consistent, I think the sky's the limit. And um, we do believe, you know, far, far, far down the line that, you know, we can and we will be a part of that Final Four class. For a EuroLeague rookie, there was one game that stood out this season against Olympiakos, where he scored 10 points, claimed nine rebounds, and also produced five massive blocks. But there is one he remembers above all others. The second one was Panulis because it was a play where the first time he drove and scored it on me, and I timed it wrong, and he made it. So I told myself, if he comes back again, I'm going to time it better. So if he, I think it was in the third quarter, so he came, and then he tried to like separate, and then I got my hand on it. Athleticism plays a part, but I think the biggest thing is just always uh, being in a defensive position, um, timing, and just reading the play. Because as coaches always teach you, the ball scores in the basket, not a man. The ball has to go, so always knowing what a ball is. EA7 look ready to take that big step forward. To do that, Gani Lawal suggests a winning formula. I always tell myself, uh, stay hungry and stay humble. 
I mean, it's simple, but that's, that's, that's Ghani. This week, EA7 Emporia Armani Milan hosted Laboral Cucha Vittoria at the Mediolanum Forum of Assago. The Italian team were ahead from the beginning. Laboral found solidity in the paint with Thibaut Place, who scored 14 points. Curtis Jarrells and Keith Langford led the five players in double digits for EA7 Milan with 16 points each. Andres Nocioni kept Laboral in the game, finishing as the top scorer of the night with 18 points. But the hosts controlled the Spanish comeback in the fourth quarter and took the win 83-76 and moved up to a 2-1 record in top 16 Group E. There were two outstanding performances for their intensity in the top 16 round three. One was from the Euroleague all-time scoring leader FC Barcelona's Juan Carlos Navarro. And the second came from a future superstar, Unicaja Malaga Zoran Dragic. Barcelona guard came back from an injury to face Olympiacos Piraeus at the Peace and Friendship Stadium. In the first two periods, Juan Carlos scored just two free throws, but after the break he decided to get into the game. He managed an exceptional 14 points in eight minutes in the third quarter, with four two-pointers and two long-distance shots, leading his team to a fundamental win on the road to the playoffs. Zaran Dragic, the 24-year-old guard, was equally incisive. He scored 14 points out of his 24 in the last 10 minutes. In fact, Zaran decided the game against Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul in the fourth quarter, when he scored two free throws, three inside shots, including one dunk, and two three-pointers, giving his team an unbelievable partial score of 27-9 in the final period. And now let's check out the top three plays of the week. Number three, Malaga, Spain. Sergi Vidal makes the steal and Zoran Dragic races down court to rock the rim as Unicaja score the last 15 points of its second straight top 16 victory. Number two, Madrid, Spain. Rudy Fernandez makes a spectacular save, gets it back from Sergio Lul and beats a shot clock in style as Real Madrid stay perfect for yet another week. And the number one play of the week in Istanbul, Turkey. Mantas Kalnietes with the game in his hands dials up a winning three-pointer from way downtown to give Lokomotiv Kuban its first top 16 victory in club history. Two of the most crowned teams in the continent, Seska Moscow and Real Madrid, will face each other in the next game of the week. A long-time rivalry that started in the 60s when they met three times in the final of the competition in 1963, 1965 and 1969, with Seska winning the title twice. This matchup has taken place a total of 37 times, the last two in the 2012-13 top 16, with Madrid winning 86-78 at home after an extra session behind 20 points, 13 rebounds and 5 assists from Rudy Fernandez. And Seska triumphing 81-72 on its court as Sonny Weems notched up 21 points. Madrid is the only unbeaten team this season and also has the best offence, averaging 89.9 points per game. They also lead the competition in three-point and free-throw shooting percentage, defensive rebounds, assists, blocks and index rating. Fernandez is the best player for index rating so far, while superstars Sergio Rodriguez, 
Nikola Mirotic and Sergio Lul are the other main contributors. Sesca coach Ettore Messina has a solid defence, conceding only 68.3 points per night and a balanced offence where the main weapons are Milos Teodosic, Weems, Vladimir Mitov and Sasha Kaun. And a system of play that allows any of the players to become decisive. A night not to be missed, with plenty of superstars on the court in one of the most fascinating and classic challenges in European basketball. Next Thursday in Moscow, Russia, Seska and Real Madrid will share the floor in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Top 16 Round 4 Game of the Week. Presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport.